CGIDH Michael Douglas is giving CGIDH Jeff Bridges from Tron 2 a run for his CGIDH money. If only you'd protected Janet with such ferocity. This sounds like a terribly mean thing to say to a guy who lost his wife, but realize that he's only trying to give exposition to the audience. You've already lied to him, now you want to go to war with him. Yes. Wait, where the f did your bloody nose go? 26 second Marvel logo can go f itself. Movie needs to tell you this is the present day because honestly, Paul Rudd looks the same now as he did back in 1989. Oh, I'm serious, man. I'm not going back. I got a daughter to take care of. Did you not have that same daughter to take care of before you went to prison? Because the only way you didn't is if you only served like five months or some f which I doubt, since that would make you like a small-time felon who I shouldn't feel that sorry for. Welcome to Baskin Robbins. Would you like to try our mango fruit blast? Baskin Robbins accepted this product placement slash insult on behalf of their underpaid employees. At first glance, this all looks ordinary and normal, but then you notice the boss apparently rides a motorcycle, the employee of the month plaque is kept hanging above the boss's personal sink, the microwave on the shelf here is not plugged in, or else it would be displaying the time or flashing 12 o'clock right now, and I'm pretty sure that's a rubber chicken right next to the microwave. Then you start to notice like this near the bottom shelf, which contains a metal bucket, a huge decorative wicker ball, and what looks like a pumpkin-shaped candle holder. And it starts getting weird. And I haven't even gotten to his bald spot or the two obvious Fantastic Four Silver Surfer posters near the doorway. Movie makes a huge joke out of his masters in electrical engineering, which buys him a job at f***ing Baskin Robbins, which is some total f***ing bullshit. Look, this is 2015. Even with a prison record, if you are some kind of uber genius, there is definitely a job for you out there better than fast food. If you at least look for it for more than one day. I got fired. Damn, they find out who you are? Why did you lie to Baskin f***ing Robbins about your criminal past? You lied to Merrill Lynch about your criminal past, not f***ing Discount Dairy Queen. Baskin Robbins always finds out, bro. While I'm laughing, I'd like to point out that his buddy Luis knew Scott was going to work for Baskin Robbins and somehow didn't tell him this age-old adage of Baskin Robbins always finds out. That's Kurt. He was Folsom for five years. He also did a stretch at Arkham Asylum, making him one of the few people to survive a DC Marvel lockup crossover. Vista job, yes. No, no, I have heard of this robbery. I'm not sure you've heard that accent anywhere, though. And what does he do? He hacks into the security system and transfers millions back to the people that they stole it from. And just like that, all complexity in Ant-Man's character is erased by some after-the-fact noble backstory reason bullshit. Also, in an attempt to make sure we're not rooting for a dirty thief, movie makes Scott out to be a Robin Hood type, where his crime was simply to punish an even bigger crime. Little perfect job. No way. Supposed friends try to get just released from prison guy to do more crime cliche. Movie tries to digitize modern day Stan Lee onto Michael Douglas' body. Holy shit, that's really Michael Douglas, isn't it? <laughs> An ant man. Whoa, whoa, roll credits, but dude, you're gonna have to lube us up before you go right into a silly name like that. At least describe it as a man the size of an ant before naming it, which should have been somewhere around the one hour mark, and should have at least entertained the idea of small soldier before discovering the copyright infringement. Propaganda. Tales to astonish. Hardy har. Capable of altering the size of the wearer for the ultimate combat advantage. Why is size of an ant the ultimate combat advantage? Come to think of it, why did you waste any time on this research instead of research to make humans ten times larger? An all-purpose peacekeeping vessel, the Yellow Jacket, can manage any conflict on- I'm going to guess the guy who did the voiceover for this Yellow Jacket video was immediately murdered for having knowledge about the Yellow Jacket. Efficient in both preventative measures- This is a super huge CGI motion graphics presentation that had to have been in production for weeks with a huge team of people. And yet this announcement is still somehow a surprise to everyone here except the guy making it. And the elimination of obstructions on the road to peace. Even industrial videos know that when the shit goes down, it goes down on the Golden Gate Bridge. I think I found a guy. Cue our unlikely hero in some hilarious situation. A kid's birthday party. You might expect me to send Scott for giving this f***ing horrific rabbit death doll to his daughter, but I'm instead going to send the fact that anyone would give this f***ing thing as a gift to anyone else. What the actual f***? You can't just show up here. Movie wastes the awesomeness of Judy Greer in a thankless role cliche. You're her hero, Scott. He is? Hasn't he been in prison for three years? Isn't she like five? How does she even remember him, much less make a hero out of him? This is how far the technology is at this point? You're trying to sell this already? Can't we have one bad guy who has all the tech in place before he comes out of the closet as evil? Also, movie rips off the crazy science guy, kills the military funding guy before he can shut down the super soldier experiments thing from Spider-Man. Goodbye, Frank. Frank Flushing. I just shrunk somebody into a tiny pile of goo face. Okay, I appreciate that the point of this budget sheet is to show how committed he is to doing what it takes to see his daughter again. But I can't let this shit slide. He's making $72 a month, but his expenses are only 30? Raise your hand if you can live on $30 in expenses a month. Go on. I'll wait. I said go on! Also, with an income of 72 bucks a month, these rent-based numbers over here on the left are pure fantasy, right? 
I don't see how he hopes to see his daughter in 377 days using these figures. More like never. So, uh, he tells me that she's working as a housekeeper now, right? This part is ridiculously awesome. We will remove one sin because this seems like exactly the type of thing Edgar Wright would have done had he stayed on the project. This movie just got way more Italian job than I think it meant to. Wait, you think it meant to? Well, now that's even worse, isn't it? My favorite thing about Ant-Man is that the two-hour movie had time for the Scott delivers waffles to the hacker guy scene. I f***ing love that scene, man. Thank God this master thief is also a master chemist, or else this would be a short-ass movie. I'm in. No alarms have been triggered. He's Scott found all the stuff he needed in Hank's house to make a fingerprint and get inside the vault in five minutes. Okay, so far this movie is MacGyver breaking Ocean's Eleven bat. This is the kind of crime where I would immediately look for the guy who has a master's in electrical engineering, was recently released from prison for theft, and stays in an apartment with his former cellmate. Now, we find out this is all set up by Hank anyway, but even if it wasn't, it's amazing Scott doesn't take the steps to make this look a little more amateurish. It's a bust. After going through two high-security vaults, Scott's ready to declare this a bust without checking for secret rooms or hidden floors or really anything else in this place. Sanitize the workstation, bring in subject 35C. Why would you immediately bring in another test subject after this last one failed? Don't you need more research? Isn't this like a chemical you're trying to make, requiring lots of lab time? Or is this guy so evil he's just killing animals for no good reason now? Hero looks into a mirror and wonders what the fuck is up with himself, cliche. Hey, why doesn't he just hit that button again and grow large? Any reason? Scott falls and hits these rusty pipes, which do not break, but he does break through the ceiling of a nightclub no problem. He survives all this crap. Garrett Morris makes a cameo as cab driver in this scene, and he gets to say one line. What the hell? Exactly, Garrett Morris. Exactly. I don't understand. No, I don't expect you to. Because I'm only going to give you 10% of the information, and the movie's barely a quarter of the way in. Wait a minute, how does this translate into this chick telling this guy that Hank has a safe and someone could break into it? Did Hank approach her and tell her, one day there will be some money in your car. You know what to do from there. Also, of course the idea that this ends up working is absurd, but I'm sending the fact that Hank is able to mastermind this just before this asshole Darren cracks the shrinking code. With the world in the balance, you'd think he'd need to be more direct than hoping some mad game of telephone is going to end up landing the guy he needs to break into PIM Technologies. Geez, why not give him a little more time to break out than this? You could do this almost any time, right? Besides, getting into this suit in less than 10 seconds? No way. Is that a camera on an ant? Hey, that's my line. His name is 247? He doesn't have a name, he has a number, Scott. Do you have any idea how many ants there are? Millions, I'm guessing, if not billions, which makes it even more remarkable that he's somehow riding an ant with such a low number as 247 to begin with. Definitely no ants in this shot, but voila! Total ant party when Scott tries to get out of the bed. Tiny ants here to serve as secret service to Scott. Hey, does the movie ever try to explain how a guy who invented shrinking technology somehow managed to bond with literally the entire global ant population? It doesn't? Wonderful! Scott, I've been watching you for a while, uh, ever since you robbed Vista Corp. Like Gandalf, Hank somehow thought he'd need a burglar for this job, and even though he's got full access to the building through his daughter, and nearly any trustworthy person could have put on the Ant-Man suit to do what he needed, he decided to have a burglar tryout, which required a hundred things to go right before it could proceed. But how do you make them do that? I use electromagnetic waves to stimulate their olfactory nerve center. Oh. Over a minute and a half of pure, raw, unadulterated exposition. So he conspired against me and he voted me out of my own company. How could he do that? The board's chairman is my daughter, Hope. Hope doesn't seem to be the I make business decisions based on my personal feelings type, but then again, I guess I'm supposed to know 43 years of Ant-Man history before I watch this movie. Silly me. Scott, I believe that everyone deserves a shot at redemption. That's why I went looking for my partner in crime amongst the existing criminals, as opposed to Olympic athletes, stuntmen, martial arts experts, professional athletes, or even regular people who haven't committed a crime. Darren Cross is a dick to tiny baby sheep that used to be normal sized. I honestly can't believe I just wrote that sentence. I think our first move should be calling the Avengers. Yeah, but getting all the actors to do an Avengers movie isn't cost effective, even though it makes total sense in reality. And oh yeah, Scott would be amazing at cinema sense. Also, this is funny, but he's also right, which serves to only exacerbate the movie's weaknesses, as opposed to providing a moment of levity combined with a decent explanation why Ant-Man is on his own in this movie. This is not some cute technology like the Iron Man suit. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Besides, they're probably too busy dropping cities out of the sky. It's actually Ultron who does that, Hank, but nice inside joke, I guess. Why don't you wear the suit? You think I don't want to? I can't. Spend years wearing it. It took a toll on me. Um, that doesn't mean you can't put it on one last time and save the world, right? You're not doing it yourself because of psychological issues. Also, thanks for fucking telling me after I've worn the suit several times, ass. You charge big, 
You dive small, then you emerge big. Why would you ever need to do that? Is that something that he'll specifically have to do in a short amount of time during this heist? Why can't he simply stay small the whole time? And then here's a montage of him running into a door a bunch. Isn't this as simple as pressing a button to turn small? You've learned about the suit, but you've yet to learn about your greatest allies. He's learned about the suit? Last time we checked, like a dick, this guy couldn't even charge big, dive small, and emerge big. Learn about your greatest allies, the ants. But why? Just because you're small like them? Aren't you also small like fleas, flies, ticks, mites, bedbugs, and a host of other insects? The only reason ants are involved here is because some asshole named this soup thing Ant-Man. And that's f***ing it. Movie definitely turns into Honey, I Shrunk the Kids here. There's a security guard posted around the clock. We'll need you to take him out to deactivate the security systems. Or, now stay with me. You could just be a small bastard, walk in there, and deactivate the security system without doing any harm. The tube is protected by a laser grid and we can- Does this seem like the exact same blueprint to the Death Star from Star Wars? Red shrinks, blue enlarges. What? <laughs> If you can shrink or enlarge anything you want, why does this movie have any conflict, dude? Our focus should be on helping Scott. Really? Is that where our focus should be? Well, you keep the father-daughter conflict vague enough, I promise not to care about it. Deal? I don't know why I came to you in the first place. Neither do I! It seems like you have more than enough power at Pym to sabotage Cross from within. Think about Cassie, about how badly you want to see her and use that to focus. Apparently, the techniques of method acting will make the mind control ant thing work. I knew I had to shrink between the molecules to disarm the missile. You mean, you didn't have any technology to shrink and enlarge a bomb or something that could destroy the missile before it got to its target? Seems like many different ways to succeed that don't involve shrinking between molecules. Also, how did you catch up to this missile as an ant? And even if you could, it seems like any fighter jet could have been called out to immediately fly out to this location and blow this thing out of the air. Also, amazing Hank finally tells Hope the truth after all these years, right after Scott told her that the whole reason her dad didn't want her in the suit was because he didn't want to lose her. Furthermore, this is some truth that did not need to remain a secret for any reason other than a dramatic reveal an hour into the movie. But why didn't you tell me that sooner? I was trying to protect you. Good God. Here's the I was trying to protect you bullshit in another movie. Protect her from what? Loving you? Does he think by telling her what happened she'd try to replicate it? Ooh, my mom went subatomic. Sounds awesome. When can I try it? And considering Hank locked his suit in a vault somewhere, when was she ever going to try it anyway? Be go! Look, I don't doubt that a squad of ants could jump out of a plane at this altitude and land anywhere near- Wait, no, I actually totally doubt that. We might have a problem. You didn't see the Avengers logo until now, dick bat. Ah yes, now we come to the whole reason why this scene was included, for more Avengers tie-ins. Everyone's sitting around thinking, you know what, we need to prove that Ant-Man is in the same universe as the Avengers. How do we do that? Here we can put some cheeky dialogue in, but we really need to see Ant-Man interact with, I don't know, let me throw this dart. Falcon! Also, thank God Falcon is in this movie, to completely legitimize it with the rest of the Marvel Universe. I mean, could you imagine? He can see me. Wow, Scott does this without the expectation of immediately getting his ass kicked. And he's right! Falcon has apparently never tried to kill an ant by stomping on it before. Especially in grass, this was doomed from the start. It gets to the point that these suits are so Marvel branded, so much the same, that neither of these characters look any different from one another. I see that Falcon has the technology to see small things up close, but I don't know how this dude keeps immediately finding the exact place where they're flying in order for it to work. It's really important to me that Cap never finds out about this. Haha, <laughs> isn't he a card? No, seriously, watch Captain America Civil War coming to a theater near you. Also, where the f*** is everyone else Avengers related that after beating Falcon, Ant-Man is able to just do as he pleases? Are they like Congress and they all just go home for several weeks at a time? Then why was Falcon here? You jeopardized everything! Seems like that would have been the first thing he did once he got here. But nah, this works better. Hey, how about the fact that I fought an Avenger and didn't die? Well, you fought Falcon, who's technically an Avenger, yes, but like... The way that Hawkeye is an Avenger. You feel me? How the hell did you get in here? Left the front door open, Hank. Well, sure. Any open door means come right in and be a creepy bastard. Sure. All those years ago, you picked me. What did you say? Midichlorians? There's something you guys need to see. Something that took 10 seconds while I was in prison will now take long enough that all of you are in an entirely different conversation by the time I get back. You know, I used to hate you, but now I like you. Sarcastic quip. Mutual admiration confirmed. Goodbye. How to scare your daughter and possibly blow your cover in 10 seconds. The Italian Impossible 11. Scar isn't telling Luis to shut the hell up in this scene. Hey, what are you doing? Do you think I'm not going to send a local Nashville actor whom I've met and joked with and managed to make it into this big budget movie playing an asshole security guard who isn't very good at his job? You're dead wrong, everyone. Take that, Jesse James. You've been sinned. Awesome, but how many ants are dead or dying below the surface to make this scene possible? Do we care? Of course not. This plan presupposes no one will be in the bathroom, will ever come into the bathroom and not notice this giant ant infestation. 
That's Pim. Considering you guys have been looking for Pim since this morning, and he hasn't exactly been hiding, why didn't you come and knock on his door? Oh, no, 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 no! Wait, did T.I. just drive this car around within running and chasing distance the whole time? Did he basically drive around giving them hope they could catch it on foot? This guy celebrates too hard and draws the attention of the very cops he just tried to distract. Too many seconds of this cartoon laser light show posing as a thrilling fight sequence. Setting the charges. Examples of things Hank could have done to save his wife from shrinking between the molecules. Jesus, how did he get to that space bar? Remember when the cops came in? Well, that's where the computer is and it's facing the other way. Yet, this 100 pound weakling is able to struggle enough with the cop outside to hit that space bar just in time. Drop your gun. Delivering lines this way. Why did the enlarging blue discs work to break the glass, but he couldn't just expand his suit to normal size to do it? They use Ant Machina. Tank and its occupants survived this. Also, oh look, they used that enlarging fairy dust magic to make a tank, clearly illustrating my point about how little conflict there should be in a movie with this kind of technology. That means the two guys we saw getting arrested, and are probably responsible for all this stuff going down at Pym Tech, somehow managed to get out of the handcuffs and back into the getaway van. Can a bullet even hit an ant? Wouldn't like wind and aerodynamics just slide the ant out of the way? No? Okay then. Oh, and also, oh no, they killed Anthony! I almost cared about him that one time with the things that happened. I guess those bombs were supposed to make this building implode like poltergeist? And it's the moment you've been waiting for when two adversaries fight each other with basically the same technology. It's Iron Man and Incredible Hulk all over again. Yeehaw! Now I have no clue what's going on, but at least there's a cure soundtrack. How is Cross suddenly a droid at fighting in this suit when he only recently perfected his technology? Please! Put your hands up! Yeah, they were following the helicopter a minute ago, but it went into a crazy tailspin, and Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket fell while inside a briefcase, which they did not know contained two tiny Marvel properties, so that they knew where to go was some bullshit is all. No problem can't be solved with electricity. I realize he's probably mad at Scott to some degree, but he's clearly a wanted fugitive now. Why is exacting personal revenge on Scott more important to him than fleeing and still selling this one suit to the evil warlords? Not just me! Where the f*** did these ants come from? The Thomas the Tank Engine sequence is great, but really only serves to tease what a full Edgar Wright Ant-Man would have been like. Lots of CGI ants were harmed in the making of this scene. So you trust how insignificant you are. Why is it when someone becomes a full-blown villain, their brain goes into full taunt mode? I love how once this ant gets giant, he's like, f*** this helping the tiny human bullshit. I'm gonna go find some fruit. Freeze! SFPD! You might as well have walked in and said balls resting on my chin, and it would have made just as much sense. Does this look like a guy who's gonna be stopped with your standard issue cop gun? I'm gonna have to shrink between the molecules to get in there. My question is, is the whole suit made of titanium? I know the back of it is, but surely much of the rest of the suit is some sort of stretchy material. Why doesn't he tear through that and punch him in the dick several times? Oh no. What do you mean, oh no? You knew what you were getting into before you stupidly decided to do this. Hero gets butterfingers and almost loses the crucial widget cliche. Yeah, but if you can't make the regulator work while it's down here, how can you make the disc work too? If the regulator shuts down because you're tinier than an atom, then doesn't this also malfunction? That's her. That's how you get ants. Wait. Look at the girl I'm with. You know what I'm saying? She's crazy stupid fine, right? And the bartenders are all like, yeah, crazy stupid fine. Removing Stan Lee's audio from his cameos is half the battle. So there was a secret room in this vault, complete with a keypad, but I guess Scott didn't notice it because there is clearly no f***ing keypad on this wall. And just in case you weren't excited about the Avengers 3, I mean Captain America Civil War, here's a mini teaser that basically says, hey, this movie is coming out. Thanks for waiting through seven minutes of credits for us to tell you that which you already knew. You know, I, I always tell myself, there's gotta be something better out there, but maybe I, maybe I think too much. Dude, are you gonna hook up with a Mexican girl? You're trying to hook me up with them, dude. Dude, it'd be great if you did. Buddy. I get it, man. Good morning, Hank. Try to contain your excitement, Freckles. Oh, by difficult time, he means when my mother died. We lost her in a plane crash. What do you want, Kern? You sold her my file. Didn't you? Who are you talking about? That's what Jamel, how much did she pay you? You've taken your eye off the ball. Avenge me! This is my own private domicile and I will not be harassed, bitch!
when you put your hand into a bunch of goo that a moment before was your best friend's face, you'll know what to do. An analysis of the plans provided by Princess Leah has demonstrated a weakness in the battle station.